Tosca is one of the most exciting scorers from the moment it starts. It has everything. It has the bad guy, the good guy, and lots of sex as well. We've got love, revenge, jealousy. It has all the ingredients for a visceral experience. It's a thriller, maybe the best music ever written for a thriller. If I was told I could have one desert island opera, it would have to be Tosca. When you first meet Floria Tosca, you meet a very tempestuous, lively woman. She is an actress, she's a singer, she's an opera singer. She really is full of everything, of jealousy, of charm, of beauty, uh, anger. She just got everything that flashes, changes on a dime, and that's Tosca. Marco Varadossi, he's strong, passionate, impetuous, he's an artist. He's in love with a very beautiful woman, Flora Tosca, and, and that love is very mutual. Her relationship with Mario, I think it's very picante, very hot and spicy. They're Italian, they're hot-blooded. It is pretty hot-tempered. He's smart, intelligent. Unfortunately, a little bit too much for his own good, which is why um, Scarpia and his cronies have their eyes on him. Scarpia is definitely at the far end of the spectrum of, of nastiness. Baron Scarpia is the chief of police. He is sadistic, he is ruthless, and he rules with an iron fist. He is out to pull things together in Rome to get political prisoners imprisoned, tried, sometimes executed. But he also has a very soft spot for the local diva called Tosca. It's sort of this cat and mouse that happens with Tosca and Scarpia. It's a power struggle. He's driven, really, by the idea of being able to add her to his, perhaps at this stage, quite long list. It would cement his ability to have secrets over everyone. Let's do um, the beginning, please. Jonathan Kent's production with Paul Brown's sets highlights the sort of underbelly of power. So that rather than just being in the church at the beginning, it is in the church, but the setting is on a lower level. And so the important things don't take place so publicly. Even in the rehearsal room, when, it's, when it rarely comes together, you start to think, this is, this is really fantastic stuff. Sharone, sciogliete. Yeah, so the, with, with really, you know, just way. smiling. Yeah. Yes, good. Can we do that same thing, please? This is opera rehearsal room number two at the Royal Opera House. And this is our last run through before we get to the stage. This is my first time doing the role, so it's a really good opportunity for me to um, put these people through the pressure of mm -hmm. me getting all the moves right <laughs> and all the words right. Try and grab her dress. I've not worked with Joseph. We haven't worked all that much together, no, Jerry. And no. it's, it's like chemistry. It builds, it grows, the excitement. It's time to develop. And not to forget the composer, Puccini. This guy is uh, a genius. <laughs> He had an unusual mastery of the human soul. He knew exactly which chord, which note to pluck, literally, at the right time. There's nothing like reality in your face. And I think Puccini is the master of that. Of course, painting it with wonderful melodies and sweet melodies, dramatic melodies, happy, sad, that these are all elements. But the bottom line is verismo realism, life, in your face. If Puccini was alive with us today, I have no doubt in mind that he would be working in movies. He could do the script, he could do the cinematography, and he could do the score <laughs> better than anyone else. You can feel as a singer this sort of luxury of letting go and, uh, and feeling your emotion pour out as well as your voice. It's wonderful, I love it. Yeah. 
It's this jewel, it's this operatic gem. It's perfect. You know, it really is a, the perfect opera.